Now, next, next, let me just briefly discuss the shape of the boundary layer profile in terms of the, the, how the velocity varies from the surface and as it goes to the free stream speed. Typically, usually, the way, we, we, the way people describe velocity profiles is to use a general equation for the local speed little u divided by the free stream speed u infinity, and they write that as a function of y. Now, y, if this is my surface, y is the vertical distance from the surface, okay? And I'm basically, I'm going vertically upwards and looking how the velocity u is changing, okay? But we write it generally just as a fraction u over infinity, a function of y. Now, for those who did the example sheet last time, uh, you guys will have noticed that we gave you two examples. One is u over infinity sine something, and the other one u over infinity y over delta, I think, something like that. So it's a function of y. And generally, those, they, these forms, they describe a boundary layer. Okay? And in general, a boundary layer looks like this. So this is your surface, okay? solid surface. The y is the vertical distance away from the surface. x is along the surface. So at a given point along the surface, if someone asks you, if you do something, in fact, uh, maybe a good idea next year to ask a student to plot the velocity profile, and you actually, to be, to be honest, guys, you could, well, we could have asked you to do it, and I'm sure you would have done it, is basically uh, along the airfall or the wing, you choose a point somewhere, and basically you go, you go vertically upwards, and you just uh, follow what the speed u is, how the speed u is changing, and you just measure that along a distance y. And if you plot it, you will find it looks something like that. It always starts at zero, and then it grows like that. But there are kind of slight differences between uh, this profile if the boundary layer is laminar and if, if it's turbulent. And this is what I'm showing you here. So uh, again, so what we plot, uh, of course, we're plotting how y varies with, sorry, how u varies with y. So typically, you've got the y-axis, and here is the speed itself. Okay? But remember, we're plotting here along this line. This is where kind of some people get confused. So at a given point along the surface, we make a vertical line y going from the surface towards the, the free stream speed. And basically along that line, we just see what is the local speed at each point. As I go through the line, what's u? u will vary, vary. And I'm just showing you here with uh, flow vectors how the size of that u will, will increase from zero to the final speed at the edge of the boundary layer. So when you plot it, you plot it y as a function of u. Is everyone clear? I hope you don't get confused with that. But I can, I can appreciate why it might be confusing. So uh, you plot it this way and you get, as I said, a profile like this. So yeah, the laminar boundary layer is the thick line and the turbulent one is the dashed line. Immediately you guys see that the boundary layer thickness for the laminar boundary layer is smaller than that of the turbulent. Yeah, so turbine bubbles are always thicker than the laminar ones. And also the way they change. So uh, this is kind of, uh, uh, it's not really a straight line, but, you know, uh, but this one, the turbine bubble, as it arrives towards the surface, it changes so much, very, very close to the surface. Whereas this one, the change in the speed is more kind of, le or, or less pronounced towards the surface. But this one is much, much more. And it, in fact, it's so much, much more, it's very hard to show you on the graph. Okay? And this is why, just out of, out of interest, I can tell you that a lot of research is actually centered about looking at the layer very, very close to the surface, this layer here, because that's where a lot of shear stress occurs. Not here, but this is where a lot of shear stress occurs. And people actually doing research, they try to create clever ways of controlling the flow very close to the surface for turbulent boundary layers. Try to, again, to reduce the skin friction drag. So yeah, um, all I expect you to know is really, if I ask you to plot the turbulent boundary layer versus the laminar <coughs> boundary layer, I expect a plot like that, showing the relative size of each one and how they vary. Okay? And it's very important to remember uh, that the turbulent boundary layer here uh, it goes, uh, or it changes very, very, uh, very, or changes a lot towards the, the surface more than the laminar boundary layer. But then it kind of 
uh, it's kind of uh, fuller or what we call fatter uh, and before it starts to grow very fast after that uh, but the, bun the lamina is more goes more like this this is really all I want you to know really at this stage right but of course both of them as you guys can see they must satisfy the no slip condition which is the, uh, the speed u is zero at the surface okay 